Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and once again it is time for current events in the online fitness community and as I said I'm going to do a few more of these. Uh, I need you guys to link them to me on Facebook though if you have things that are really relevant that you think I want to cover. One of my long time followers uh, linked me something from Alan Thrall. And keep in mind guys, I haven't been keeping up with the community so if you guys will help me with this stuff it'll be great. Uh, and I listened to Alan's video, and at first, because I saw it and people had told me some negative things, I thought I was going to hold a really negative stance of this video, but I really didn't. Uh, you know, when I got in and listened to what Alan had to say, it wasn't that bad of a video, to be fair. He raised some good points. Um, some things I do want to point out, though, uh, immediately, and I would remind Alan, uh, I've been in this game on YouTube a long time, kind of an OG fitness YouTuber and early on I really was one of the guys I was probably and I could be wrong but I was probably the first person uh, making videos saying hey guys look we can do heavy strength training on on the big three and we can do curls we can do tricep extensions we can do all this stuff together we can program it together and make it work for novices all right so my ice cream fitness i put out in 2012 i only had 25 followers on my first channel when i put it out by the way i had 25 subscribers 25. and then in 2013 that program of mine got published in uh, muscle and strength and got over 10 million views you know so this stuff has been out there and i would remind alan there there were a lot of us who who were pretty popular back in the day who were saying hey we can do the two uh, you know, and as far as a lot of his points, I think people have really kind of done this where they've made the lifting world very divisive. And it wasn't really that way when a lot of us started out. You know, it really wasn't the original old iron gyms like I used to train at. You would actually have power lifters and bodybuilders both train there. Uh, they both kind of learned from each other, right? Your bodybuilders tended to be strong, you know, and your powerlifters learned a little bit about gaining muscle from some of the bodybuilders. There, there was a mutual respect over 20 years ago when you would go to, again, the old school iron gyms like I started in. Right. It really was a little bit different of a world, you know, and but Alan is right. We've seen that divisiveness. And I and I think it's it's because of the way a lot of people have trained differently over time. You've seen more more people in the bodybuilding world start saying nonsense like, oh, well, the big three aren't good for building muscle, you know, and so on and so forth. Right. You have that nonsense. That's nonsense. They're great for building muscle. And then, you know, you've got certain groups of powerlifters saying, well, you know, we don't need curls at all. We shouldn't bother to do curls. And I do curls. I know plenty of powerlifters who've done curls way back in the day. A lot of strong men do curls. It's useful for their sport. Uh, here's the thing I would point out. You know what? Biceps are a stabilizer on the bench press. Big biceps can help you pop out of the bottom of the bench just a little bit. It could add an extra couple pounds to your max bench. Now, granted, I don't have the best biceps. I have terrible bicep genetics. You know, and that's okay. Plus, I've torn a bicep before, as you guys can see on that left side. That doesn't help. But the thing is, do we really need to separate the whole concept of building muscle and gaining strength. No, I don't think that we do. It's only at the most extreme ends that they become a specialized niche. And, and I agree with Alan there. I think he's right. It's only when we put that label on that we're, we want to be at the very extreme. All right. Maybe, maybe if you want to be a top level power lifter at Worlds, you might have to really limit a little bit of the hypertrophy work for some of the smaller muscles that's eating into your recovery, uh, possibly. You know, okay, maybe if you want to be Mr. Olympia, you shouldn't be trying to deadlift 800 pounds unless you're Ronnie Coleman, right? <laughs> unless you're Ronnie Coleman. He did it for a couple reps. Uh, all right. But for everyone else, realistically, the majority of people out there trading, 
They want to get big and strong. They want to get jacked. They want to get jacked. And there's no reason. It's just, it's ludicrous to step back and say, hey, I can't be jacked and be strong. I mean, granted, I'm not the perfect specimen of either. I'm over here almost about to turn 47. I'm 46 right now. But, you know, you guys see me doing uh, five pause reps with 315 on the bench there. That's a normal workout for me. I think I'm doing like four reps in this video with 545 on a deadlift, full resets. You have to see me pull 635. You know, most of my training is, is, is higher reps, though. It's, it's hypertrophy work because, you know, hypertrophy raises our strength ceiling. And this is the thing that we have to remember for all of us. Until you get to the extreme ends and really when the drug doses and stuff start to get really high, that's, that's really what we're talking about. Right? We're, not even talk, we're not talking about drug We're not even talking about moderate gear users, to be, to be quite honest. You're not going to separate muscle mass and strength to a meaningful degree. You know, and here's what I would say to the guys who just want to get jacked. You should still want to be strong. Being strong is a good thing. Do a little bit of strength work. I'm not saying it has to dominate your training, but you're still going to need progressive overload. You're still going to have to have progressive overload. Right? But I'd also say to those guys... Look, you know, get get your your bench up to even for your 10 rep sets. You know, you can do 250, 260 for three sets of 10 on the bench press. You're telling me you're not going to have a big upper body. You're telling me it's not going to be bigger than when you did 185 or 10. Of course it is. Right? We still have to follow the, the principles of progressive overload. Now, granted, for hypertrophy, our goals have to be, you know, internal tension, whereas for maximum strength, what are we doing? Learning to use our best leverages with the muscle mass that we have. But that muscle's going to raise your strength ceiling. And so definitely, the guys who want to be strong, you should, should absolutely be doing a lot of hypertrophy work, a lot of it. Hey, it matters. And, and so in a lot of ways, I, I think Alan is right. I think he's right. Um, I don't feel that his video is really controversial. It really isn't. Some of it, especially when you understand the history of the Iron Game, when you understand it, you understand the history of the lifting world, go back 20 years, 30 years, 50 years. But, but even when I was, I was coming up in this, that level of divide didn't exist the way that it, it does now. It really didn't. And I don't think that it has to. I don't think that it really has to. Look, why don't we all just realize that unless we are competing at the upper echelons in one of these endeavors, the labels aren't that big of a deal. And there can be a whole lot of overlap. Let's just all get jacked let's get strong and let's support other people who are legitimately trying to do that and put out good information and help other people get jacked and strong there, there's an enormous overlap in these areas and there's a lot of scientific literature showing that at this point so overall uh, you know I think Alan made a good video I think he made a good video and I like it I like it, and I didn't think I was going to, but I did. And, uh, you know, I support what he's saying here. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.